America's Most Wanted is the original true crime series. You can run, but you can't hide. Hello, everybody. I'm John Walsh. And I'm Callahan Walsh. And this is America's Most Wanted. We're back tonight with a whole new batch of fugitives that really need to be brought to justice. And with your help, we can do exactly that. We have an incredible team of investigators with both local and state police and the FBI ready for your tips. Call 866-AMW-TIPS or go to amwtips.com. Remember, no tip is too small and we promise you can remain anonymous. In the early morning of November 20th, 2016, authorities got a 911 call from an unidentified woman. They didn't know who or why she was calling, but her screams from the other end of the line made it obvious that she really needed help and quick. With some keen detective work, the police discovered her location and snapped into action. Wait until you see this heroic story play out. I've been in policing a long time, almost 30 years as a police officer. A domestic disturbance, we also refer to those as family violence. Those are some of the most dangerous situations an officer can respond to. Many officers uh, throughout the country have lost their lives responding to these types of cases. On the night of the attack, Colleen, our suspect, was the boyfriend of Gloria. They had been out. She had made a decision that she did not want to remain in the relationship. November 20th, 2016, Colleen and Gloria had arrived home in the early morning hours. Gloria was not feeling well, so Colleen became upset because she refused to have sex with him. Colleen began taking Gloria's clothes off. She repeatedly told him no. Colleen told her if she called 911, he would kill her, except she had already called 911 at that point. 911, what's your emergency? And then he hears the dispatcher's voice on the other end of that phone. It appears and that's when he begins his attack and stabs her multiple times. The 911 dispatcher could not ascertain what exactly was going on, but she did hear a female screaming for help. 911, why At some point while being stabbed, Gloria was able to get Colleen off of her and eventually made her way outside into the neighbor's home. Colleen had taken Gloria's phone away from her and ran out the back door with both Gloria's phone and the bloody knife to the neighboring street where he dropped both the phone and the knife and we believe that he fled the area. Hello? Luckily, the phone was able to stay connected and the 911 dispatcher heard everything. All units responding. About a quarter till 6 a.m. I was dispatched to an open 911 call. In my 12 years of law enforcement, I've never seen a case as heinous as this one. What's the address again? Within 16 meters of Whitney Drive. It was a female for me. Okay. Do you need to get any information? Oh, no, I couldn't hear anything past the script. As the officers get into the area, it was very challenging because we didn't have an address. But because we had an open 911 call, we're assuming if we find the phone, we're going to find the victim. The dispatcher became very creative and decided to direct officers based upon the sounds being heard on the open 911 call through the 911 system. We had officers that would honk their horn so that they could determine based upon the dispatcher whether those sounds were getting louder or not. I remember asking if she could hear dogs barking and what we could hear and trying to compare it and it was very similar to playing Marco Polo. As they got closer, those sounds were getting louder and the officers were getting closer to where we believe the victim may be. There's the phone right there. There's the phone. There's a knife. Bloody knife. Lovely. So now that the officers have the phone, the knife that are both covered in blood, the questions on officers' mind at this time is where's the victim and where's the attacker? 
when we respond to domestic violence calls, dispatch checks what we call a premise history. So the dispatcher started checking the area where the phone was pinging. And that led us to this location which had two prior domestics. 61, I'm gonna have a fairly massive amount of blood in the uh, front doorway and sidewalk. Police! Now, those police officers and the 911 operator were really quick on their feet. It goes to show you what they're willing to do to save a life. Yeah, when you dial 911, it doesn't send a pin of your exact location to authorities. The information that a 911 dispatcher receives can place you anywhere from 50 to 300 yards away from where you actually are. And 300 yards is about three football fields, which is a pretty big difference, especially in an emergency. Now, when we return, the police had found the victim's cell phone. But could they find the victim? We'll talk to two of the sergeants on duty that night. Welcome back to America's Most Wanted. As we saw before the break, the White Settlement Texas police had arrived on the scene to find a cell phone, a bloody knife, and a massive amount of blood. But they still needed to find the victim and her attacker. But what they decided to do next was really amazing. I hear a faint female voice to my right. I grab my flashlight, look over, and I see a massive amount of blood on the front of another home two doors down and a woman slumped beneath the door not moving. Officer Tibbet arrives with me at the front of the house, assists with putting a tourniquet on Gloria's arm where she'd been stabbed in the artery and lost a massive amount of blood. As Gloria is in and out of consciousness, she calls out her attacker's name. The, the they start what? Gloria. So with officers now having a name of Gloria's attacker, they find a truck parked in front of her original residence. Henry North King 4357, Henry North King 4357. They run the plates and it comes back to Caesar Colleen, but he was nowhere to be found. Gloria was brought to a local hospital in critical condition. Officer Brown confirmed with medical staff that Gloria had five deep critical stab wounds and was currently in surgery. The next step was to clear the house. Police department! 61, we've cleared the house in the backyard. Holy cow. Yeah. Stabbed her in the bedroom, it looks like. Yeah. They clear the house. They determine there is no other victims and that suspect is at large. The good news in this case is that she made a full recovery. The fact that our 911 dispatcher worked with our team of officers to direct them to the phone, which was found in only a few minutes within a one mile radius, is what saved Gloria's life. Stay with Gloria, okay? Unfortunately, we were never able to find where the suspect was located. Investigators believe that the fugitive escaped back to Mexico based on several interviews with the victim, people that knew Cesar. There's a level of frustration that creeps in uh, on calls like this because he's still out there. We absolutely believe the suspect is still very dangerous. And so that's why it's so important that we get extra eyes and ears on this case. We asked viewers to look at the photographs that we have at the time. We are really optimistic that somebody knows something that can lead us to Cesar Colleen. Do the right thing and give us the call that we need so that we can bring justice to Gloria. It was the clever thinking of that 911 dispatcher and the White Settlement Police that saved that victim's life. Two of the sergeants that were on duty are here with us tonight, Sergeant Lana Cook and Sergeant John Banner. Great to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. This is a story with a happy ending, but not such a happy start. You know how urgent it is to find this lady. What are you thinking about while all this is happening? We see a massive amount of blood, a 911 call had come in. I've got a horribly injured woman, and we don't know if the suspect is around us, if he's in the area. Are there any other victims inside the house? And what more resources we can get on scene to get it figured out? 
Now you're thinking all the calculating stuff. What were you thinking emotionally? We don't know where this person is, and it, it can be frightful not knowing what you're going to enter, what you're going to see, what you're going to find, the tragedy of what, you know. Might have a very bad ending. Yes, exactly. Domestic violence is a very serious situation to be in, and it only gets worse. Once it begins, it does not stop. And these guys are cowards for what they do. Real cowards. You know, people say, oh, it's just an argument between the boyfriend and girlfriend. And it's not. It's very violent, very violent for the responding cops, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's full of emotion and super unpredictable. It's also one of the most common calls that we go to. So you risk your life every day you roll out. And what would it mean to you guys, the 911 operator, and especially to the victim who is still looking over her shoulder? If we caught this guy, what would that mean to all you guys? It'd mean a great deal. I, I believe she would not be living in fear anymore, and just to see justice would be a, a great value to her. It's a representation that people who do these things are not going to get away with it, and They're that people pay. do have resources yep. to reach out, and people will help. I want to thank you and the 911 operator for helping this victim. You probably saved her life, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Glad to. Colleen is wanted for first-degree aggravated assault. He's now 38 years old with black hair and brown eyes. He's 5'7", and when last seen, weighed 175 pounds. We have an AMW age progression of what Cesar Colleen might look like today. Now, this stabbing occurred in White Settlement, Texas. And while authorities know that Cesar Colleen has family in Grand Prairie, Texas, they do believe he fled to Mexico following this attack. Please send us your tips. Whether you're here in the U.S. or our friends in Mexico, every tip gets us one step closer to catching this guy. Don't forget, we guarantee you can remain anonymous. Call us or go to our site, 866-AMW-TIPS or amwtips.com. You can run, but you can't hide.